My name is Major Tom Stevenson, the Brigade Fire Support Trainer here at the National Training Center. Today we're going to discuss the Brigade Fire Support Rehearsal and watch some examples of some best practices. So what is a fire support rehearsal? As per FM3-96 Brigade Combat Team, it is one of four standard brigade rehearsals. The other three are combined arms rehearsal, the sustainment rehearsal, and the almost never conducted reconnaissance and security rehearsal. The fire support rehearsal should last no more than 90 minutes, focuses on the execution of fire support tasks, validates the fire support execution matrix, and the effectiveness of fire support coordination measures. The fire support rehearsal should occur before the combined arms rehearsal. Ensure the integration and synchronization of the fire support effort with the intelligence collection plan and the maneuver plan. They are generally more detailed than the combined arms rehearsal. Here at the National Training Center, we see them occur both before and after the car, depending on how the brigade commander likes to visualize his operation. A key point that is often left out is that if the fire support rehearsal occurs before the car and the car leads to significant changes to the plan, all or part of the fire support rehearsal should be conducted again with those changes applied. The fire support rehearsal is also called the IC fires rehearsal, uh, which is a non-doctrinal way to simply add emphasis to the intelligence collection portion of the rehearsal. Fire support rehearsals are also used to validate our warfighting functions fighting products. For fire supporters, that is operational graphics, the fire support execution matrix, the target list worksheet, the target synchronization matrix, the combined high payoff target list, attack guidance matrix, and target selection standards, or the HAT. This has also been called the hippotagamus. Anyone responsible for a target will have their TT LODAC for that target as well. Last, we have an agenda to keep the rehearsal on track. Now we will walk through some scenes from a fire support rehearsal conducted by OCTs at the National Training Center simulating 2nd Brigade, 1st Infantry Division. In this scenario, the fire support rehearsal was conducted prior to the combined arms rehearsal, but several changes to phase two in the car led to a second go at the phase two portion of the fire support rehearsal. In this first scene, we're gonna see the fire support coordinator giving initial guidance to his team. Okay, concept of fire. Coordinator shape for teams by fire communities on the lower gate access. So we fix wing net and rock In this scene, we observed the fire support coordinator brief the concept of fires and important hit times following the rehearsal. In this case, those were target refinement cutoff time and field artillery technical rehearsal timelines. It is important that the FISC cord delivers these as it adds the proper emphasis to the process and allows the enterprise to focus on what is truly important to the commander. In the next clip, we're going to see the fire support officer set the scene for the rehearsal. So at this time, we're going to have all units move their initial positions on the board, and then we'll go into uh, setting the conditions for phase two. Okay. <laughs> Possible optical contact that's usually maneuvered through whale gap. 
Moving into the battle zone, we have supporting effort one on objective angel quest. Set it to 13, slam 23, slam 15. And supporting effort two, uh, slam 9, 18, 3 on objective angel east. In the city of Debron, we anticipate a platoon of BFP with possible non hostile contact as forces move into zone. The enemy main de defensive effort is a 13 slant 27 slant 5 on Red Lake Pass using the reverse slope of the train there to defend that restricted area. For decision points during this phase, we have decision point 2, uh, possible use of special munitions in the city of Whale Gap. And decision point 3, possible use of placement of fast cam uh, should the uh, blocking obstacles in Red Lake Pass be breached. Phase begins 220600. We have 163 LD through Wales Gap. Passing OP Casey. Uh, seize, uh, attack the seas. Objective Bra uh, Braves via the Braun. And breaching Red Lake Pass to uh, Objective Braves, where they seize Objective Braves. We have 270, plus, uh, 163 passes OP Casey. They will help you through that way that through to your objective of uh, Objective Angels East. And the phase ends with a movement corridor established for 118. In this scene, the fire support officer sets the board with all the players. It is important to get the units on the board quickly. Having them in position as others brief allows us to see potential friction points and areas we need to sync up. The Brigade S2 briefs the overall enemy picture and the Brigade S3 briefs the overall friendly operation. In the next clip, we'll observe the fire support officer brief the fire support tasks. So the EFST for this phase is to provide obscuration to grade the enemy observation of 163 armor from Red Lake Pass. We we'll accomplish this using uh, cannon artillery from 17FA. There are four F FSTs for this phase. FST1 is to provide neutralization fires in order to degrade, to degrade enemy combat power. We will accomplish this using CAS, Army Attack Aviation, and Counterfire using MLRS and cannon artillery from 17FA. FST2 is to provide suppression fires to disrupt enemy observation of 163 armor from Red Lake Pass. We will accomplish this using cannon artillery from 17FA. FST-3 is to conduct C to disrupt enemy engagement of Army Attack Aviation. We will accomplish this using cannon artillery from 17FA. Our last FST, FST-4, is to provide obscuration to disrupt enemy observation of friendly movements. We will accomplish this using cannon artillery from 17FA. And at the beginning of this phase, the Brigade CAL is the line for me. In this scene, the Brigade Fire Support Officer briefs the essential fire support task and the additional fire support tasks for the current phase. Paired with each task is a delivery asset we intend to use to accomplish each task. This also provides focus for the Brigade. If a target is not accomplishing one of the fire support tasks, it will not be a priority for the Brigade. The FSO also briefed fire support coordination measure changes from Phase 1 to Phase 2. Notice he did not simply point at a position across the terrain model, he went and stood on it. We have also seen a dedicated pointer person or engineer tape for the coordinated fire line that is moved as the operation progresses. All work well, just don't be pointing vaguely across the terrain model. In the next clip, we're gonna watch the intelligence collection manager brief collection assets uh, available with specific tasks and purposes. All right, Tim, in this phase, the geometry is going to be defined by my fast baseline cording through to baseline pike. The handover line for long knife is over here at baseline pike. Working for our deep assets, echelons of upper gate to our close assets. J stars uh, and ribbon correction. Gray eagle and ribbon joint. My on NAIs 3001. Up here at Arrowhead through 3007 at First Sergeant Watt. At 08, J Stars is going to check in. Uh, their initial task is to provide obstacle intel 
using SAR imagery for 163 armor. And then they're going to transition to that same set of AIs to look for any retrograde or reinforcements coming from objective tigers. Finally, in 1400, Vader checks it on with GMTI and ELINs to enable any counterfire missions in the enemy PAs. Here, the IC manager briefs collection assets available with specific tasks and purpose assigned to each. These are associated with named areas of interest and specific priority intelligence requirements. This is not an opportunity to list on and off station times of requested assets. Specificity is the key here. In the next scene, we're gonna see the Joint Tactical Air Controller from the Tactical Air Control Party brief his portion of the operation. Task will be to neutralize enemy reserve in the scene of Snow Cone. Snow Cone, in order to allow 163 breach, they'll be on station until 1900. Sure, uh, you know, airspace, sir, airspace, uh, aircraft will check in SCP in IV Florida, which is south of the Well Gap. They'll hold overhead. We'll have AC Destroyer High activated, which is 60,000 and 20,000 over the entire airspace, which will allow freedom of fire 15,000 and below. If there's it has to go above 15,000, we'll, we'll conduct our time deconfliction with fires. Any questions, I'll be followed by the DAO. Don't forget about your TAC-P. It is essential for him to brief his task and purpose for pre-planned close air support, as well as his airspace usage. Next cut, we'll have the Brigade Aviation Officer briefing his task and purpose, as well as the airspace he intends to use. 13, they have been for this phase, no conflicts exist for all three plant targets. Highlights for airspace start. Uh, the city of Painter Rocks with our uh, pointer here. That's a holding area. And then moving forward, we'll transverse via Mercury, routes with Mercury, Venus, and then move. We have a part, let's say ACA 2. And then we'll be fighting primarily from ACA 3. As we move on to objectives, Braves and Angels East. ACA is 11 as well. We have to say it's secret. Primarily used for objectives Angels East. Uh, uh, AAA will check in through day or air and then be passed down to the FSOs by battalion and maintain comms with those elements. Any questions? The Brigade Aviation Officer briefs the overall task and purpose for aviation as well as routes, airspace coordination areas, forward arming and refueling points, and check-in procedures. These are all important as the FSOs and FA battery commanders can ensure that there are no conflicts with their mortar firing points and position areas for artillery and rotary wing. The next scene, we're gonna watch each battalion level fire support officer brief their initial set. In order to describe their initial set, beginning of phase two, start with five, look at. Long knife two seven, squadron FSO. Beginning of phase two, I have my four fist teams with two JTAGs. Uh, B fist with FS3 capabilities. I have three mortar sections with two tubes each and a Q50. For my MFPs, uh, starting in the south, C troop MFP located here on the north side of the furlong, as with the fire 1600. Moving north, I have A troop and B troop mortars in a combined MFP the south side of John Wayne Foothills, Hills, azimuth of the fire is 0800. For my OPs, again in the south, C Troop, the northern edge of the furlong, oriented on OP Casey. I have B Troop, in the John Wayne Foothills, oriented on Objective Angels West. And I have A Troop, in the John Wayne Pass, oriented down into the pass. Our Q50 is co-located with the C Troop CP, during this phase. Any questions? The question is two So we're still going to take the Boston Pit Attack Manual Thunder. Uh, we currently got three, three big fists, uh, three, three FS3s, uh, one attached Q50 Stacon, uh, four, four mortars, uh, and then two uh, attached JTAC teams. Uh, we're currently possibly here, we're, we're waiting on the trigger to move. Uh, Sir, Team 163 FSO, Dragon 27. Uh, Dragon Fire is currently equipped with three B fists uh, to include FS3, IBAS, and LLDR capability. Uh, one by Q50, which will be co located with Charlie Company, uh, four by 120 
uh, mortar sections currently located in attack position Dragon. Uh, sir, we have the mortars established in MFP-1 in position ready to fire, and we have our scouts in OP-1 in position ready to observe. All right, 118. Team, Vanguard 27. Uh, we've identified three BFIS within this 3 and LMDR, as well as four 120s. Uh, we have one Q50 attached and a JTAC team. Seventeen, sir. Team, the uh, task force Saber FSO. Currently, we have one available for PWT holding in ACA one in vicinity of Painted Rocks. But during this phase, we'll have the ability to mass up to six AF sixty fours between twelve and midnight. And the AF sixty four armament is going to include four Hellfires and three APK WS uh, laser guided. On station time is going to be an hour and a half or until Winchester. Then we'll also have all of the task force shadows available at this time. We'll act as our primary primary One seven. Sir, T, Lightning 317 FA. Alpha battery is currently positioned at PA 101 with an aspect of fire of 1200. Bravo battery positioned at PA 106, aspect of fire 0400. Charlie batteries at PA 104 with an aspect fire at 0500. We have one Q53 south of OP1. We also have one Q53 southwest of the whale. We also have four, four Q50s outcome to each of the new battalions as stated. Each fire support officer briefs their initial set, including positions, status of equipment, any attachments and detachments, initial observation posts, and their orientation, as well as mortar firing points. The FA Battalion S3 briefs each battery's initial set, including their combat power and asthma of the fire, as well as the locations of their organic radars. This establishes the baseline for the beginning of the rehearsal. This is normally briefed before phase one and not each subsequent phase because the end of the first is the beginning of the second. But in this case, we are starting at phase two, so it's important to set the baseline. In the next scene, the Brigade FSO is going to initiate the trigger to start the phase and each subsequent fire support officer is going to brief uh, by trigger order uh, their portion of the plan. Time is now 0600. All right, 06 Task Force Dragon is set to LD from attack position Dragon. Uh, first target is Alpha Echo 0020 to support fire support task four, provide obscuration. Uh, the trigger for this target is once the lead element Charlie Company crosses phase line Debbie. Target is located here. Primary observer is our scouts from OP1. Alternate observer is 54 Cav. Primary delivery system is 155 millimeter. Alternate is battalion orders. Battalion will provide three zero minutes of smoke. Primary communication will be FM, digital, and voice, with the alternate being JBCP. And at this time, request is sent to digitally uh, process. Uh, this fire mission fire target number Alpha Echo 0020. Brigade FNC receives Alpha Echo 0020 digitally, and it's clear air and ground. Send it digitally to 17FA. 9 FPC receives Alpha Echo 0020 transmitted digitally to our primary shooter Charlie Battery at PA 104. Set target line 0950, max order 4900. Charlie Battery FTC receives target number Alpha Echo 0020, 30 minutes of smoke. Charlie Battery FTC sends shot and splash to Italian FTC receives and shot and splash to Brigade. Brigade receives shot splash for Alpha Echo 0020 and transmits that digitally to 163. And shot splash received by Dragon Fires. And that will be end of mission. Target number Alpha Echo 0020, enemy obscured. Brigade receives Alpha Echo. In the mission, Alpha Echo 0020. Going to be obscured, sends that to 17 digitally. Italian FTC sent in the mission to Charlie Battery. Charlie Battery received in the mission of target number Alpha Echo 0020. This is Charlie Battery's trigger to move from PA 104 to PA 107. This is anticipated to take one hour. Charlie Battery being in position, ready to fire no later than 0730 with an asset of fire of 0. And at the time, Task Force Dragon will continue their attack to seize Objective Braves, uh, establishing MFP, MFP 2, Asthma the Fire 0600, uh, and also OP 2. 
The Brigade FSO starts the operation at the end of the previous phase. The FSO is briefed by triggers. In this case, crossing the line of departure of 163 armor is a time-based trigger, which is why it was announced by the Brigade FSO. This starts the ball rolling and subsequent actions will be triggered by the previous briefer. If there is a lull, the Brigade FSO will either state the time for a time-based trigger or prompt the next briefer with the triggering event again. As the 163 Armor FSO briefs, he is briefing using TT Lodak. This doesn't have to be fancy, just use TT Lodak and you can't go wrong. Of note, as he briefs his primary and alternate observer for Alpha Echo 0020, the 5-4 CAV FSO acknowledges his role as the alternate observer by raising his hand in the observer location. Talking through the radio calls or digital transmission is an important part as well. This ensures that all are tracking the proper routing on the proper net and keeps everyone from sensor to shooter engaged. Of note, all are using their fighting products to brief the entire scene, not a pre-written script. This validates the products are correct and useful and is training as we fight. In the next scene, the Aviation Task Force Fire Support Officer is going to brief his portion of the plan, uh, suppression of enemy air defense fires, which is critical for any aviation attack. Time is now 1400. At this time, Task Force Sabre, two uh, AH-64s come on station. We have two targets in support of Fire Support Task 3 for their suppression of enemy air defense. First one, Alpha Echo 0035 will be fired when Aircraft at HVA 3 just south of the whale. Primary, primary observer is going to be Task Force Shadow and the ultimate 163 armor. We'll be with a battery 6 DGBT. We will send this uh, mission digitally to Dagger Fire. Dagger Fire receives Alpha Echo 035 digitally. Air and ground are both clear, and we transmit that digitally to 17FA. Battalion FTC receives Alpha Echo 0035, transmit digitally to Charlie Battery PA 107, then target line 1050, max over 3300 feet. Charlie Battery FTC receives target number Alpha Echo 0035, battery 6 HEVT. Charlie Battery FTC sends shot splash round complete. And shot splash round complete sent to Brigade. Shot splash round complete Alpha Echo 0025 sent to uh, 617. Shop splash round complete received by Task Force Saber. In the mission, Alpha Echo 0035. In the mission, Alpha Echo 0025 sent to 17FA. Alpha Echo 0035 in the mission, Mr. Charlie. Charlie Bear received in the mission of Target Alpha Echo 0035. On the end of mission of Alpha, Alpha Echo 0035, we will fire target number Alpha Echo 0041. Again, in support of our Force Task 3, construction enemy air defense. Our primary, our primary observer will be Task Force Shadow with the ultimate of 160 armor. And again, we probably with the battery 6 AGPT. Then the Dagger Fire is good. Dagger Fire is received now by Echo 0041 digitally. Air and ground are both clear, and we transmit that fire mission digitally to 17 FA. Battalion FTC receives now by Echo 0041, transmit digitally air from their shooting Charlie battery, PA 107. Then target line 0750, max over 3,300. Charlie Battery FTC receives target number Alpha Echo 0041, Battery 6 HEBT. Charlie Battery FTC sends shot splash and routes complete to the time. Shot splash routes complete sent to Brigade. Shot splash routes complete, Alpha Echo 0041 sent to 617. Shot splash routes complete received and the mission of Alpha Echo 0041. And the mission received and transmitted to 170. And the mission of Alpha Echo 0041. The Aviation Task Force FSO briefs both maneuver of the attack aviation and the seed plan that he developed for the attack. Often the Aviation Task Force FSO is not present at the brigade rehearsals and seed is not planned or is an afterthought. The Aviation Task Force FSO should be present and brief the same as any other FSO. If he cannot be present, his plan still needs to be briefed during the rehearsal, potentially by a liaison officer from the Aviation Task Force or maybe the Brigade AFSO. This ensures that Aviation Task Force plan is synced with the rest of the Brigade and friction with their movement can be worked out as well. If the Aviation Task Force is conducting an attack and there is no seed, you're doing it wrong.
In the next scene, we're going to observe 163 armor conducting a breach in Red Lake Pass, which is the decisive point for this phase. All right, time is now 1600. All right, 1600, Task Force Dragon, uh, acquisition prepared to conduct the breach. Uh, we have also established MFP 3, uh, has been fire 0400. Uh, first target is Alpha Echo 0025, which supports fire support task 2, uh, provides suppression fires. Trigger for this target is once uh, the breach force is leaving the assault position. Uh, and once again, keep in mind, this is the same trigger uh, for Alpha Echo 0030. The primary shooter, uh, correction, primary observer uh, will be scouts from OP2. Alternate observer uh, is 270. The primary delivery system is 155. Alternate is battalion mortars. Uh, battery will provide two rounds a minute for nine zero minutes in support of Alpha Echo 0025. And they will provide nine zero minutes of smoke for Alpha Echo 0030. At this time, request to send digitally to dag uh, dagger fires to fire targets Alpha Echo 0025 and 0030. Dagger fire receives Alpha Echo 0025 and 0030. Boat, air, and ground are clear. Transmit digitally to 17. Battalion FTC receives Alpha Echo 0025 and Alpha Echo 0030. For 0025, our primary shooter is Charlie Battery MPA 107. Charlie Battery 107 FA FTC DG 10 down. Uh, Charlie Battery FTC will execute will transition to our secondary shooter, Alpha Battery MPA 201. Their gun target line is 1450, not towards 4,100 feet. For Alpha Echo 0030, we'll transmit that to Bravo Battery MPA 106. Gun target line 0950, max or 9,400. Alpha Battery receives Alpha Echo 0025, two rounds a minute for 90 minutes HEVT. Alpha Battery sends shot and splash at the time. Yeah, yeah, Steve receives shot and splash. Dagger Fire receives shot and splash. Alpha Echo 0025. Shot and splash received. Simultaneously, Bravo Battery receives target number Alpha Echo 0030. Uh, it's a smoke mission with one round a minute for 90 minutes, and FEC sends uh, shot and splash to Battalion FTC. Battalion FTC sends shot and splash to Receive shot and splash, Alpha Echo 0030, and transmit to Julian 163. Dragon Fire receives uh, shot and splash. At this time, we have deemed both the suppression and the smoke to be successful. Uh, we will call cease loading end of mission target number Alpha Echo 0025 and 0030. Enemy suppressed and obscured. Right, end of mission Alpha Echo 0025 and 0030. Transmit to 173. Tiny FTC receives and sends cease loading end of mission for 0025 and 0030. Alpha Battery receives seize loading and an emission for Alpha Echo 0025. Bravo Battery receives seize loading and an emission on target number Alpha Echo 0030. Uh, upon an emission of uh, target number Alpha Echo 0030, the Bravo Battery is triggered to conduct a movement from PA 106 to PA 205. In route, Bravo Battery will conduct an R3P. I anticipate uh, being in position ready to fire in PA 205 no later than 1930. Uh, with an after the fire of 0400. Upon um, Bravo Battery being positioned ready to fire, is uh, Charlie Battery's triggers to move from PA 107 to PA 206. On the route, I'll conduct an artery key. Anticipate being in position ready to fire no later than 2130 with an after the fire of 0600. Good briefings continue as 163 Armor prepares to breach at Red Lake Pass. 270th Armor acknowledges he is the alternate observer for both Alpha Echo 0025 and Alpha Echo 0030. The fist cord injects some friction by taking the primary shooter for Alpha Echo 0025 out of the fight. The battalion fire direction officer uses his field artillery support plan to immediately shift to his alternate shooter. Unless the inject was written into the script, which defeats the point of having an inject, reading off a prepared script would have desynced the rehearsal and the operation if the inject happened live. Because the FDO was using his fighting product, the inject was barely a nuisance, and the team worked through it very quickly. Also of note, the Charlie Battery Commander is tracking his event-based trigger to jump position areas for artillery after the end of mission on Alpha Echo 0030 and immediately flows into that action as the event takes place. He briefs his rearming plan, 
the time he believes it will take to make the movement and his new azimuth of fire. Alpha battery follows right behind based on his trigger of Charlie battery in position ready to fire. This is what right looks like. In the next scene, we're gonna see another inject initiated by the collection manager, which is an often unrehearsed portion of the brigade fire support plan. At this time, Vader flying over NAI 2001 uses MTI to identify a possible enemy rig. They then use their FMP to confirm that it's enemy three months. And the vice, the tight end is created and passed to Dagger Fires. Shadow is given to the Warno to conduct PDA on Flint Mission. <clears throat> Dagger Fires receives that mission from uh, the Vice. It's a Prima and it's during our counterfire window, so we send that to Division uh, Target Alpha Echo 8055. Receive back out the shot, splash, rounds complete, Alpha Echo 08 or 8055. Uh, one uh, Prima battery neutralized. Here, our second inject is delivered by the collection manager as positive identification of enemy artillery in one of our brigade named areas of interest. This is an on-call mission that originates in the brigade intelligence support element. We very rarely see this sensor to shooter kill chain rehearsed during the fire support rehearsal, but it is critical to establish how that mission flow will work as the vice to the brigade fire support element is where most of the brigade shaping fires will come from. The next scene, we're going to watch the Brigade Fire Support Officer close out the end of Phase 2. With the ultimate Mega 270. All right, and that will end Phase 2. We've got uh, no change in the targets uh, at Observer Plan. Uh, from this, uh, target economic cutoff time is uh, 16.30, and time our FM technical rehearsal will be at 1930. The Brigade FSO briefs the Brigade's in-state for Phase 2 and ties it back to the previously rehearsed Phase 3. He covers do-outs and reiterates the FISCORD's target refinement cutoff time and the FA technical rehearsal time. The FISCORD finishes up with a few closing comments. Before I leave you, I wanted to highlight some things we see at the NTC pretty regularly, some of which you just witnessed in these clips. Use TT Lodak. You can't go wrong with it. Often we see battalion FSOs stumbling through their target because they do not have their data in this format. Just use it. Get leaders out on the terrain model as soon as possible. A large preamble by many staff sections is not necessary, as most of the information was in the operations order, and everyone has already read that. Quickly brief changes and get out there. Within five to 10 minutes is a good goal. Use your fighting products to conduct the rehearsal. They're what you will use to fight, and should be able to get you through the rehearsal if they are good. If not, relook them. Also, Brigade owns version control. We see different units showing up to rehearsals with different versions of the same product. Have a system that works for you to manage your versions. Brigade needs to ensure that the fire support execution matrix is aligned with whatever synchronizing mechanism the maneuverists are using. This works both ways. If there is an event fire supporters are using as a trigger, it should be on the maneuvers X check or sync mat or whatever synchronizing product they're using. Luckily, not often, but we do see rehearsals conducted without the battery commanders present and the FA Battalion S3 briefs all the FA Battalion actions. This is not preferred as we are missing a critical opportunity to synchronize our batteries to the maneuver plan. If they must be absent, have a stand in on the board for them moving around. This gives everyone present at least some idea of the battery's movements. As we saw in the video, triggers such as times might need to be called out by the fire support officer to drive movement. FSOs brief their OP locations most of the time, but rarely brief their capabilities they have planned for that location. For example, OP1 will be at November Victor 123456. It will be a dismounted OP with FM on a long whip as their primary communications platform and then LLDR is their primary observation platform. This allows the FISCORD or the Brigade FSO to see if an OP can really observe an assigned target and potentially adjust equipment between fire support teams or assign the target to a different OP. As with any rehearsal, there needs to be a scribe recording friction points and changes that occur based on discussions during the rehearsal. These need to be followed up on with new versions of affected products after the rehearsal concludes but before the FA technical rehearsal starts. Scripts are individuals telling their stories. This does not get after synchronization 
and is really not useful for those conducting the rehearsal. Use your fighting products. We see FSOs brief, I have no targets in this phase all the time. It doesn't matter if you have targets or not, you have information to brief. You still have a maneuver plan that your unit is executing. You also have OP locations and mortar firing points that are necessary for everyone at the rehearsal to understand. The terrain model is best. If it is not big enough to stand on, you might as well save yourself some time and use a map to rehearse. But neither are useful if our graphics are not depicted on the map. Most often left out at the NTC are our airspace coordination measures. Showing how all players are deconflicted and synchronized leads to more responsive fires. Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of TAC Talks on the fire support rehearsal and our thoughts and observations from the National Training Center. Good luck and we'll see you on the high ground.